You know how some days you wake up unexplicably early? Consciousness just invades your sleep? Well, this is one of those days for me. And of course, I go to YouTube, look around a bit, see another video from Brock. Interestingly enough, I made a couple notes on this one. Uh, interestingly enough, he's just rehashing that old Aquinas argument. You know, first cause, uncaused causes, infinite regress, etc. Uh, of course, it's reworded, trying to make it sound a little bit more interesting, when in reality it's the same old hack. Um, as I mentioned in one of my earlier videos, with modern knowledge, which is the problem with many of these Christians, Christian apologists, is they don't look at modern knowledge and they use 600 year old arguments just rehashed. But with our modern knowledge of the world, we've learned a few things. Uh, we can point to events and say that they're uncaused, thanks to quantum mechanics, we know this occurs. So, besides the argument itself being internally conflicting, being a case of special pleading and being and begging the question, it also no longer conforms what it, with what is known about the world, what's known about reality. And then Brock goes on and commits another horrible fallacy. It's another is the whole straw man fallacy thing again. It's like Christian apologists can't get away from that. It, you know, it's, it's like a, it's like a pitfall trap in the forest that they keep falling into. Walking down the path, do 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 do, boom, right into it every single time. Uh, in this one, as he's typed all this out, he indicates that evolution doesn't account for the origin of everything. Well, evolution doesn't account for the origin of everything, Brock, because evolution isn't a theory meant to account for the origin of everything. Brock, evolution simply accounts for the diversity of life and the origin of new species. That's it. Evolution doesn't talk about how life arose. Evolution doesn't talk about how the Earth got here. Evolution doesn't talk about how the universe got here. Those are all covered by other theories, Brock. For example, how life originated is covered under uh, is covered under a biogenesis, which, by the way, some of the work being done in that field is amazing. I mean, we're showing how simple chemical systems do, in fact, give rise to self-replicating molecules that actually have their own form of inheritance, but. That's a complicated thing I'm not going to go into right now. Uh, for the Earth, Brock, you know, we have the accretion theory of planetary formation. Yeah, it doesn't sound much like evolution there, does it? Or how about the universe? Well, we have a couple. We have first the Big Bang, which simply explains that the universe expanded from a small infinitesimal point in the past. And then we have theories that govern that, is that infinitesimal point, which falls under quantum mechanics, uh, M theory, things like that. So we do have these things, and many of these things are backed up by either direct evidence or inductive logic starting with something that's known, not something we just assume to be, and moving forward into what should be uh, how it is. Of course, all your little apologistic treaties have been a deductive form of logic where you assume something first and then you try to argue for it through a deductive uh, framework. Deductive logic has its uses but as an, expl as an explanation as a tool for explaining it fails almost every time because you have to make this assumption of beginnings um, I'm trying not to say the um thing anymore. I just did, sorry. And then we did the something from nothing again. Uh, Brock, very few people nowadays, except for Christian apologists, um, 
that are knowledgeable in the sciences claim that anything came from nothing. There's always been something rock. I'm just saying that that something isn't a god. That something is basically what has been referred to as the bulk um, with string theorists and multi you know, when we're dealing with multiple dimensions and stuff. It's the fusion of all possible dimensions, Brock. And since matter and energy are simply a product of those dimensions, it's a fusion of matter and energy as well. And let's deal with this whole non-physical reality thing, Brock. I would like you to point to anything. Anything. I mean anything. That you think is non-physically real. And show me how it's non-physically real. Because, I mean, we can look at things like the concept of love. <laughs> Many people might say love is a non-physical reality. But it isn't. Love is governed by our brains. It's governed by chemical reactions happening up there. We can even induce the feeling of love by injecting a person with, uh, hor with the correct hormones. How about logic? The laws of logic. Well, Brock, the laws of logic are just like the laws of gravity. They're derived from the universe. They're derived from the physical. As a matter of fact, we found that some of these laws of logic don't apply completely across the board to the physical universe simply because we didn't know about other aspects of the universe at the time. Uh, so, even these laws of logic, Brock, are derived directly from the physical reality. So, I do challenge you to show anything that's not derived from a physical reality. And if that's the case, if you can't find anything that's not derived from physical reality, Brock, that pretty much indicates that there's nothing truly non-physical that exists. It doesn't prove that there isn't because you can't prove a negative, but uh, there you have it. So, Brock, again, I have to say, you need to do research. The arguments you used in this recent video are, again, they're old arguments. They've been used before they've been dealt with before. They're to rehash them as you have. Um, well, it does good to fool a younger population that hasn't seen these arguments before. You may do that. Um, but for those of us who have seen this stuff again and again and again, it's too easily refuted. Brock, I suggest you get your nose out of that book by uh, De Souza. Take your nose out of De Souza's book. Go out and read a science book, a book on science. I've given you a couple, a go, a couple to start with. Um, but I myself am going to read De Souza's book. De Souza's book, Maverick, since it's so early this morning, I'll probably go down to Barnes and Nobles and pick it up now, or in the next few minutes. So have a good day, Brock. And please go by.